Hi. We're back. <laughs> Deal with it. Deal with it. Yeah. Hey, I'm Colt Westbrook at Walrus Audio, and this is... I'm Mason. Mason, Mason Stoops. Today we're at Sweetwater, and uh, in the wake of the release of the Lillian Phaser, we're talking about where exactly does Phaser fit in the signal chain of your pedal board, which is a question that we get uh, all the time and that Sweetwater sales engineers get all the time as well. And so we're gonna nip that question in the bud for good. Done right so. now. Are you ready? Because we're about to go down. Yep. All right. I'm ready. We're, you play guitar a lot better than me, just a little bit. Not a lot, but a lot. So where would you traditionally place phaser in your personal board? For my personal board, we're gonna, coming from a traditional standpoint, you'd call phaser a modulation pedal, wouldn't you? I would, all day. So generally, modulation's gonna go after your drives, or fuzzes and, and whatnot, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, before your delays or your reverbs. So kind mm -hmm. of that middle area where you would also put tremolo, yep. you could put chorus, what, anything else that would go near a phaser? I think that's no. I think that pretty much sums it up. Man. Filter stuff. Well, sometimes people put filters first, you know. It's true. Yeah. That's not to say, however, that you can't experiment with phaser. I mean, Jimmy Page like would put phaser in front of tons of stuff, you know, and and uh, and that's you know a whole different sound. So don't feel like that there's one right or wrong way to do it. However, if you were going to have a board and you wanted it to kind of function the way. Mm -hmm. than a board you could say traditionally would. A phaser after drives, but before your delays and reverbs, kind of the best spot. Yeah, kind of a good rule of thumb is, is compression and then dirt, overdrive, and then your modulations, and then after that, all your time-based effects, so mm. delay and then reverb. Uh, but also, really, it's all subjective, so it's kind of up to you. I mean, it's all, it's all a blank paintbrush, you know? And uh, it's your palette and your paints and you bought them, so you get to put them in whatever order you want to. Uh, I I put my Julia chorus uh, right after my compressor before my overdrives. Really? Yeah, I do. Um, but I mainly use the Julia for vibrato, and I don't know why. I just like what it does uh, feeding into the overdrives. I thought I would like the Lillian before my 385 overdrive, um, and I was playing with a bunch of guys at the shop with it, and then. One of the guys was like, you should probably try it after, see what it sounds like. And I was like, no, dude, I'm not going to like that. And then he switched it for me while I stopped and went to the bathroom, and I came back, and it was switched. So I decided just to try it out. I ended up loving it. You love it. Uh, I like the Lillian, the way the phaser sounds before the drives, um, but not before like a drive that responds like an amp, like the 385. And so that really was a difference for me. And so I put it after uh, the drives after that, and then the rest is history. Yeah, we should probably hear what it sounds like a little bit. Would you like just to? Just right in that spot. So maybe put some drive before it. Yeah. And then maybe after, add a little bit of uh, reverb. Just so oh my gosh. Hear, hear that signal. Hear You're that so signal. so good at this. Okay, mm. well let's start with uh, just my dry guitar sound. It's a little Telecaster here. Going into a Fender Twin Reverb. All right, so this is, uh, this is just our dry guitar sound. No pedals, no funny stuff. Cool. Now let's do, uh, what do you think, phaser phase? Phaser, let's do phase. All right, here we go. Let's add a little bit of overdrive. All right, so this is now the Voyager going into the Lillian, correct? That is correct. Let's see what that sounds You're like. You're in your dirt, into your phase. So that's Voyager first, then into the Lillian, and now we can go from that into something like the ARP 87 delay. Why not? Let's try it. See what that sounds like. <laughs> And I like that because it's one of those one of those riffs and a type of playing that you don't necessarily you don't necessarily hear that on a record 
and say, oh man, I love that phase tone. Like you just kind of love the part, but then if you take the phase out, you notice it, it loses kind of that throaty, chunky feel. Should and we so, show them that? Yeah, why don't you try that, just to show what the phaser adds to that. Now with the phaser again. Goes to show you never know what you have until it's gone. I don't know if that's what that shows. <laughs> cool, if you have any questions uh, about phaser, where phaser fits in your signal chain, uh, or questions in general about Walrus Audio, uh, you can contact your Sweetwater sales engineer at Sweetwater. Thanks so much for watching.